Hey guys, so for this video, I want to talk about how you can easily get more arena points and reach champion divisions. As with every new season, your arena points have reset, forcing you to grind your way back. The main difference for Season 3 is the whole meta has completely changed. We have what's essentially a new map, an entirely fresh loot pool, and unique playstyles that come along with those things. I already covered the basics in my video on how to win this season, definitely go watch that, but I have not covered competitive or arena. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through the most useful strategy to climb an arena in season 3. These will include everything from where to rotate in each zone to secret tips for maximizing your arena points. And no, I'm not going to cover sitting in a helicopter like a weirdo. With all of that being said, let's get right on into it. Now, before I get into the early, mid, and late game, I quickly gotta recap the arena point system. For Season 3 solos, you get 60 hype for top 25, 30 hype for top 15, another 30 hype for top 5, and 60 hype for a win. In addition to that, you get 20 hype per elimination and loose hype from the bus fare. Who could have guessed? This is the same exact format we've had for the last 3 seasons. Placement points are still way more consistent than eliminations. To prove my point, top 15 with no kills will get you more hype than top 40 with 4 kills. So if if it has not been clear already, you should be playing for placement. Starting with the early game, I always say the early game is the hardest part of the match to make it out of. No matter how smart you play it, there will always be a huge amount of RNG involved. My first and biggest tip for the early game is to find an uncontested landing spot. My spot is this hill outside Frenzy Farms with two chests. I land at the floor loot spawn right next to it, open both of the chests, rotate over to the truck using a zipline that has another chest and max wood, then I finish my looting route by taking the other zipline over back to Frenzy. I'm not joking when I say I land here every single game. Regardless of where the bus path goes or how many people are landing with me, I full send my spot. One of the worst mistakes I see you guys make while grinding arena is hot dropping or landing at the authority every game. This is obviously much more fun than what I do, but it is not the optimal way to climb. There is no chance that you're going to survive more hot drops at the authority than early games at uncontested spots. How about instead of that, you find one or two good spots, master your drops at them, and execute the looting route you've devised for yourself. This will give you the opportunity to make it to the mid game as long as you don't make any dumb decisions. I'll be putting up a landing spot video pretty soon by the way. Anyways, after you've landed and looted up, the next important decision to make is your loadout. Are you going to take a charge or attack? Are you going to carry two heals or three? Are you going to carry any utility like a harpoon? These are the questions you need to ask yourself depending on what loot you end up with from your drop spot. Me personally, I usually go for the charge shotgun along with an AR, SMG, and two heals. Sometimes Sometimes when I'm bored I'll take attack and run two heals with a utility item like the harpoon or hunting rifle, but 90% of the time I'm choosing the charge shotgun. It just does way too much damage when used correctly. Watch my comparison video if you want the full explanation. Second to last tip for the early game is to plan out your rotation for the first zone. Something you need to think about when choosing your landing spot is how you're going to rotate out of it. You need to know whether or not there are boats around, helicopters, whirlpools, or if your spot is central enough where you can just walk. In my case, I basically always yoink a boat behind Frenzy. This is usually around the time in the match when the first circle is closing in too, so I'll bring up my map, mark the center of the first safe zone, and get as close to my marker as I can. When I get there, I find a good spot to base up at, usually with high elevation, and then go and find an area where I can replenish my mats that I used to build my base. If everything goes right in the early game, you should have max mats from your drop spot. If you don't, then I highly suggest finding a new spot. You need to have a looting route that has good brick and metal to do well in arena. Those are the quote unquote hard mats you'll use for endgame and unlike wood are extremely hard to get later on. Hopefully you're starting to see how important your drop spot truly is. Final tip for the early game is to avoid fights. Yes, I know that may seem a bit hypocritical since I've been showing clips of me fighting people, but I end up in fights for three reasons. One is when someone pushes me and I'm forced to fight. Two is when I'm being a sneaky little beaver and third partying a 1v1. And three is if I absolutely laser someone or break their shield. Other than those three scenarios, I do not not often force engagements. The less fights I get into, the less chance I have of dying. So why fight? Once the first circle fully closes in, the mid game starts. To put it simply, the mid game is all about rotations. Your goal is to stay alive and make it to the late game. Beginning with the second safe zone, I recommend rotating to the dead side. The dead side is the part of the circle with the least amount of people in it. You can figure this out by looking at where the next zone moved to and thinking about which areas of the circle people will be rotating towards. For example, in this game, the second 
circle went southwest. That means everyone from the north and east will be rotating in, leaving the whole bottom left side of the circle as the dead side. Another example would be this second circle that goes northwest. Everyone will be rotating from the southeast, meaning the whole side over here, away from the congested side, is the dead side. You do not want to get stuck in the congested side of zone, so do your best to rotate away from the congested side to the dead side. Following that up, the third circle is the one you really should get to the center of. Doing so will set you up nicely for the fourth zone, which will set you up nicely again for the fifth one. Wait a minute, what should I be doing prior to rotating? That is a great question, little Timmy. If you're just sitting in your box doing nothing in the mid game, then you're doing something wrong. You should constantly be gathering information and looking for kills. That means sitting inside a cone while holding an edit, editing a wall open and closed to look through, and pressuring different players rotating into zone. I can't even begin to tell you guys how many extra kills I've gotten on clown boys rotating in too late. You could tell they have not watched my videos. Seriously though, start doing this ASAP. Speaking of useful tricks, one technique I use with eliminations I get in the mid game is to use up all of the eliminated players hard mats. That means taking what's left over and building a really big structure. Sometimes when I'm at the center of zone, I'll take their mats and build a big old base 5 or 6 stories up. Other times when I'm near zone, I'll use a bunch of brick and metal to tunnel in to the next circle. In both cases, I then replenish my mats using leftover ones and I'm left with a giant structure to look for more kills. Pretty smart, right? Back to the third circle, and like I said, you want to be at the center of it. Center of any zone gives you a higher chance of getting inside or near the zone of the next one. The reason this matters so much for the fourth zone in particular is because you always want to position on the edge of the fourth zone. Notice how I managed to position perfectly on the border of the fourth circle after being at the center of the third one? That's all because of my game sense and rotations. Even better is since I ended up on the edge of the fourth zone, I didn't have to waste any extra material, shield, or heals to move at all for the fifth one. In case you don't know why, it's due to the fact the fifth zone is the half and half zone. This is the circle that's half inside the zone and half outside of it. By positioning on the edge of the fourth circle, you're taking the gamble of getting inside the fifth zone versus being at the center and never getting the fifth circle. Just think about it. The half and half zone can never reach the center of the circle. Circle. So why would you position there in the first place if you're always going to be forced to move? You can just sit at the edge of the fourth zone like I said and pray you'll get half and half. Not to mention, rotating to the edge of the fourth zone is usually really short. The only drawback to this strategy is you can get unlucky and have the fifth circle go across the zone. However, this isn't too bad in season 3 with launch pads. So quick recap, for the second zone rotate to the dead side, third zone rotate to the center, and fourth zone stay on the edge. Also remember to collect information, look for shots on people rotating in, and plan your rotations ahead of time. As for everything after the fifth circle, those are what I'll call the late game. All of them, not including the half and half one, are moving zones. They are completely in the storm and move the entire time the zone is active. Unlike the mid game zones where you should position in certain spots, you only want to be aware of the dead side of moving zones. It does not matter whether you're at the center or the edge, the dead side is what you care about. The easiest way to reach the dead side in moving zones is to rotate early with a launch pad. Launch pads are insanely useful useful for staying alive in end games. Just make sure you use one of the low pad techniques I've showed so you don't get beamed out of the air. Alright, but what if you don't have a launch pad? In that case, you either have to wait and use someone else's, or rotate on foot and tunnel. My tip for tunneling is to always pay attention to what lair you're on. You do not want to be on a lair with a bunch of psychos trying to W key you. Play it safe and go up or down a lair when there's too much pressure. Additionally, don't forget to ping the next zone in your minimap before you rotate, as well as pay attention to your mats, how many people are alive, and who is on high ground. As you probably know, high ground is easily the best lair you can get. The thing is, it's not that easy to obtain. You either have to steal height like a maniac, or rotate to the dead side early and claim it during moving zones. That's why I said you need to prioritize the dead side. While you're on high ground, you have to make sure you're pressuring people below you. Spray down their tarps and make them waste mats. You do not want to give the person on second height any opportunity to come up. On top of that, you need to continually connect to other players' builds in order to secure your own tarp. The last thing you want on high ground is to get sprayed out and fall to your death for no good reason. So one last time, your goal is to stay alive as long as you can in the end game. Don't be afraid to switch up layers while tunneling or to use other people's builds depending where zone goes. Also, don't be afraid to go up for high ground when you can. The trickiest part about high ground is not playing it out, it's obtaining it. However, as long as you rotate early to the dead side, keep track of your mats and pressure the current person on height, you should be able to yoink it for yourself.
Overall guys, that's everything you need to know to dominate an arena. I apologize for keeping the end part short, I just feel like everyone knows how to play it from scrims and zone wars. Let me know down below if I should make a full end game guide. Additionally, if you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerrion, the support has been insane recently and I cannot thank you all enough. You boys and girls are truly the GOATs. Otherwise, that's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.